Sure. It's a bit unusual to ask the last person to get here to do the summary. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, again, it's an honour. But I've been well briefed. I was uh, pretty well briefed about what happened uh, yesterday. Uh, and I've had a good chance today to move around and get the gist of what's been happening in the workshops. And uh, hugely impressed uh, by what I heard and the enthusiasm that it was said with. Um, one workshop I was in for a little while, I felt even moved to take some direct action. I did actually, I got up and left. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, it is, it's quite an achievement for an organisation such as the Health uh, Promotion Forum to celebrate 21 years. Uh, we've got a lot of organisations in New Zealand that come and go. Uh, this one is staying, I would think. and. Uh, this is the fact that you were able to celebrate last night with a uh, birthday cake and other things. I think that's quite an achievement. So uh, to those who have been responsible for the forum over the years, uh, congratulations. And to those of you who will be responsible for it over the next 20 or so years, uh, all the best with that. The, uh, what, what I thought uh, I'd try and do is to see, from what I've heard today and what I heard about yesterday, to see whether it's possible to see uh, what the uh, goals might be to the year 2020 for an organisation such as this. Uh, it would be uh, very arrogant to say that these are the goals that the HPF should adopt. But it wouldn't do them any harm. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, whatever, these are some goals. That have to do with health promotion, but it, it certainly builds on the experience of the health promotion forum, and so it's not entirely irrelevant to the forum. Uh, I, I think <coughs> the other thing is to have a, a sense of uh, some sort of vision, and I heard that coming out in the workshops today, and I understand it was pretty clear yesterday. And this notion of uh, planning for sustainability, we, we, we think about sustainability mainly with uh, will there still be the earth, will the earth still be here in 20 years' time? But the sustainability of the organisation, more importantly, the sustainability of the message behind the organisation, which I think is, is probably the most important thing. Is the singer more important than the song? I think the song is probably uh, the thing that we need to hear. And then uh, the next 20 years is how do you, what are the key tasks, what are the opportunities and the risks that the forum will face in the future? More importantly, what are the risks and the opportunities that people in New Zealand will face that will impact on their health? And I spoke of some of those this morning. And I think it, it is possible when you put those things together to create a matrix of uh, overlapping goals, goals that are relevant to us here, knowing that whatever is relevant, relevant to us here is not irrelevant to the rest of the world. So we're not actually planning health promotion for the whole world, but it's getting really close to that. New Zealand might become a leader in health promotion. We have the opportunity to do that. We've got quite a good record. We've got a good basis to build on, notwithstanding the Norwegian countries. The, the first goal, uh, it seems to me, to be pretty much inherent in the work of the Health Promotion Forum is an aspirational goal. And the goal is derived from earlier work that came out of the 1980s uh, in the slogan of health for all. And that's uh, still pertinent. We have not reached that goal. Uh, there was some hope that by, 20, by 2000 we might have reached it. We haven't reached it. Uh, certainly if you look at global inequalities, if you look at inequalities within New Zealand, we've got a long way to go. If you look at equalities, inequalities between people, so that's the goal, health for all. I could have put by the year 2020, but you'd want to do it much sooner than that. <laughs> <laughs> the other goal is an outcome goal. An, an outcome goal, I think, of health promotion is that it creates an environment where empowerment can flourish. I don't think as health workers or as health promoters that we can actually empower people. Empowerment comes from within. What we can do is create an environment where empowerment can flourish. And I think those environments are many, and the HFA over the years has dealt with a lot of them. There are political environments which do create the wider context where empowerment can flourish. 
There are the social environments. You can't talk about empowerment flourishing in a school system where kids fail. That's not an empowering environment. There are uh, ecological environments, the natural environment around us, the one that we're aware of now that is particularly at risk. As humans, we can't feel empowered and we can't exercise empowerment if the environment we live in is, is not healthy. And there are the environments we hear regularly about now, and that's the economic environments, which are critical, but they're not, uh, not the only environments. So that I think that this notion of empowerment, which is an outcome goal, is our task as health promoters is to create the environment where that can happen. A, a third goal has to do with the partnerships, and this was a theme uh, that came out yesterday, I understand, that uh, this is uh, the whole question of health for all and empowerment is not a question for the health promotion forum acting in isolation. It can only have an impact if there are alliances with a whole range of people. Uh, New Zealand, like many developed countries, really tries to deliver well-being in sectors. Uh, so with the education sector, the social welfare sector, the health sector, a huge overlap between them and great big gaps between them as well. So that we, we don't have enough alliances between sectors. We miss out on quite a lot of new knowledge by separating out disciplines the disciplines within health, about how many disciplines have we got in health, that don't come together enough. So that uh, medical people develop their expertise, nurses develop their expertise, social workers develop theirs, health providers develop theirs, and very often we do it in silos without the linkages that are really going to be the generators of new knowledge. Between agencies, uh, between peoples with different knowledge bases, between communities and between nations. So that a really important goal looking ahead has got to be how can we better coordinate alliances and partnerships between groups. And that may be well something that an organisation like the Health Promotion Forum is able to promote. Because within you at present there are people from a whole range of disciplines but there are not many opportunities for disciplinary groups to get together to plan ahead. Another goal that really is going to be important is this goal of leadership. Uh, leadership should be uh, wide, but wise as well. Uh, it, it's, uh, how do you know who the leader is? Uh, it's, usually, it's, it's not the person who says he is, as a rule. Usually isn't. Uh, and it's not the person with a whole lot of knives in his back. Uh, he used to be the leader. <laughs> it, it, it might not be a person all, at all, but it might be a network of people who decide to work together to promote a particular cause and to advance it. Leadership in the future, I think, is going to be very much a distributed leadership and it'll come together through a network. And that's another goal, I think, that's really important to the HFA, to provide a forum where leadership can be networked and focused. Uh, it's got to be forward thinking, and it's got to be courageous. It has to be courageous enough to be able to take a step out that is unpopular. And that's hugely important in health promotion. It might go right against the grain, and it might involve direct action that is a threat to many people. The, uh, there is a visionary goal attached to the work of uh, this organisation. It has to do with the way in which society is transformed. That's the vision, is to be able to transform New Zealand society, if not beyond New Zealand, so that disparities get eliminated. And we, uh, we've, we've played with that in the past. We had a closing the gaps policy and then it got hugely embarrassing and gone in six months. <laughs> uh, increasingly, as our population changes, we've got to get better at respecting and understanding other views and other people and people with different systems and different values. And that'll be a challenge to most uh, of us in New Zealand.